again. I need a hand. What's the problem? We just got a turtle. I think that it's been hit by a boat. Oh, OK. I'll come out and have a look. You want a hand? Yeah, Chris, could you come out and have a look too? Suddenly, an emergency patient arrives. This turtle appears to have been carved up by a motorboat. Chris is making a detour to catch up with some friends at the Cairns Turtle Rehabilitation Centre. Hey. Oh, Chris, hi. Look, I couldn't come to Cairns and not call by and say hi. How are you going? Good, good. How are you? Full house as always, huh? Uh, full house, yes. Extra full house at the moment, the unfortunately. The size of this one. I know. When everyone imagines the Great Barrier Reef up here, they think of this really fertile area. But after the Cyclone Yasi came through, all that seagrass that turtles normally eat got covered in silt. There's no food anymore. Every single tank here is full. It just gives you an idea of the scale of the problem that the turtles are facing up here. With this starvation, in the last two years, we've had an 800% increase in strandings up the east coast. Now, I've got to ask, is Nelly still here? She's next door. Go and have a look. Right here? Right there. That's my girl. She looks good, Jen. She looks great, doesn't she? Chris met Nelly on his last visit to Cairns. She's put on about eight kilos since you last saw her. <laughs> Back then, her body was under siege from a debilitating virus. Fibropapillomas can be such a problem for turtles that they can essentially kill them. The problem with Nelly was that they were covering all around her flippers, which meant she couldn't swim, and she was no chance of being released in that situation. Well done, girl. You know, it's amazing. It is. All those lumps that were just everywhere. They're all gone. I know. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's not like we're seeing a couple of lumps still lingering. They're all gone. I know. So that's a combination of the surgery, but also that vaccine. Also the vaccine, yeah. The surgery and the vaccine together. And that's... And all her lumps are gone. It's fantastic. What happens is that the tumours are taken off the animal and a vaccine's made up with the tumours from her body. With this vaccine, this is the first trial that's been done in Australia and it's actually worked. So she's an Australian first? She's an Australian first. Wow. So, so really, without the surgery and, and probably most importantly, without the vaccine, she would have died. She would have died. Wow. In the wild, she would have died. Hey, Jen, I need a hand. What's the problem? We just got a turtle. I think that it's been hit by a boat. Oh, OK. I'll come out and have a look. You want a hand? Yeah, Chris, could you come out and have a look too? Suddenly, an emergency patient arrives. This turtle appears to have been carved up by a motorboat. Got two big wounds there. No, she's alive. Where was she found? Yorkies Beach, just in the bay. Wow, see, this one's moving when she breathes. So that's deep. I mean, the, her lungs are sitting right underneath here. So if they're forcing the, these little fragments up, then that cut must go the whole way through right to, her lungs. to her lungs. There's a little graze on the top of the head too, which I'd say, I think she ducked her head in there. I think it's a propeller, so the propellers the boat's come along, the propeller's cut in there as it's been rotating. It's gone whack, whack. These wounds look really dramatic, and, and they are. They're quite deep. And if they were just, say, another inch further forward, they would have taken off a head. Lucky to be alive. Very, very lucky. Just here? Yeah. I mean, this is the one that worries me a lot. Because it's down so close to her lungs. Yeah. Underneath those wounds are her lungs. So, for those to be damaged would be absolutely catastrophic. This one's really deep here, but this wound here almost has a bit of scar tissue in the middle of it, so this may not actually be a new injury. It could be something that's happened a week or two ago, and she's just been struggling to survive out there and eventually floated in close enough to shore where she's been found, so very lucky. So what I want to do, Jenny, is just dribble some saline in along here. Chris is now testing for lung damage. When she breathes, if that bubbles, then what that's showing is that there's air leaking out of her lungs. It's leaking out the sides of the cracks, but there's enough in there that if there was any sort of leak of the lungs, it'd be bubbling out and it's not. Very lucky okay. turtle. So that's a good start, but it is just a start because the, the worry is that even though the lung isn't punctured, these gashes are going deep enough that they're exposing the organs. We know that because each time she breathes, the flap lifts up. Right. So it's touching the lungs. Right. What I'd like to do is really clean it up. Another one. Hey, draw it. This might just sting a little bit. 
The unfortunate thing really is that cracks in shells heal a lot slower than cracks in bones. So there's a reason I'm using so many antiseptic washes, so many antibiotic creams and antibiotic injections, and that's because infection is the number one worry here. It's the last thing we have to do. Yeah, didn't like that. Got me. You got me a good one. Hmm? You know the other problem with you? You don't have a name yet. So I was thinking, propeller, there's an Ella in propeller. If you're okay with that, is that gonna work? Hmm? Ella? Yeah? What do you think? Is that a yes? While it was unlucky for her to be hit by a boat when she came up for a breath, she was certainly lucky to be found floating close to shore on what is quite a busy beach. And then to come in here, hopefully things are turning around for her. Yeah. Are you going to splash me? Is that what we've come to? Come on. Ella will now recuperate at the centre. And Jenny has come up with a special thank you for Chris. How would you like to have a nice trip over to a tropical island and spend a day over there when we're actually going to release two healthy turtles over there? <laughs> you might be talking my language now. Great. Jenny's propositioned me to a night on Fitzroy Island. Turtles, of course, are involved. But it's actually quite nice that I've seen so much of sick turtles now to actually see a turtle at the other end of the journey where they're being released. The happy part. It's going to be a nice change. I don't think there's ever a bad day to be on a tropical island, but this one looks like a pretty good one. Here they are, with an extra passenger, of course. I should have known. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you going. made it. That's great. Who is in here? This is little Mickey, ready to be released tomorrow. You're ready to go now, are you, Mick? Yeah. Next day, Chris meets up with Jenny for a 45-minute ferry trip out to Fitzroy Island. <laughs> on the island is a new five-star resort for sick and injured turtles that need to be rehabilitated before being released. The owner of Fitzroy Island offered us some land over there. We're only in stage one at the moment, but we've still got four turtles over there. It's great, we can increase the numbers, we can increase the amount of tanks. And so when we do get these mass strandings, we'll be able to take up to another 20 turtles. I woke you up, didn't I? You're an island man now. Come on, it's all right. You're ready to go now, aren't you? Actually, we're, we're taking you on the journey, don't worry. You don't need to swim. Thank you. Wow, look at this place. It's a perfect place for rehab isn't it? <laughs> if they want to rest up. Why not? Why would you want to leave? Uh, so this is the Turtle Resort. This is the Turtle Resort on Fitzroy Island. <laughs> Chris is about to find out he has a special link with one of the resort guests. Who's this in here? This is CB. CB? Yes. He's named after you. <laughs> really? He's named after you. That's an incredible hindrance on him the rest of his life, to be, to be named after me. It'll hold him back. Trust me. Hello, buddy. CB entered the rehab centre after being found starving to death in a local harbour. Now he's ready for a lease. He's very feisty. Well done. <laughs> OK. Oh, jeez. This is, this is what a healthy turtle looks like, right? <laughs> he is so overflowing with energy, and this is a really great sign that he's ready to be released. So where's this going to go? So we'll stick that right there. CB has been chosen to be fitted with a satellite tracker to provide valuable research data. Why do you scrub his head? Just to get all the algae off it. Is, is he's got to look good to is, go out there. Is this a matchmaking service or a rehab centre? This is... A bit of both going, here. Well, clearly. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Feeling less like a vet and more like a beauty therapist with every minute that passes. I mean, we've had dermabrasion, some exfoliation. Any minute now, I'm expecting a layer of varnish to be put on as well. It's some cleansing, and then all of a sudden, there's filling going on. It does look good, buddy. Hopefully, we can just keep him still for a while. <laughs> all of this work that's going into what looks like beautifying CB shell has a really important role, and that's to make sure this satellite tracker sticks on and stays on. It's like your own little 
backpack. That satellite tracker certainly looks big, but the reality is out in the ocean, the buoyancy of the water means it won't actually weigh anything. You won't even notice it's there. Next steps of fiberglass? It's just like putting a fin on a surfboard. I don't want to tell you how the last fin I put on a surfboard went. It didn't last for... How long do you want for this one? A year? <laughs> a year. Yeah, Chris, a year would be very good, actually. It lasts about a month, but this looks like a slightly better job. All right. That looks pretty good to me. There's no air pockets? No. Job done. <laughs> With all that work done, we can now look forward to tomorrow and CB and Mickey getting released. Yeah. You know what? It's your last night in rehab. Tomorrow you go back home. Just don't act up tonight, right? Because remember, with this tracker, I'm watching you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This CB's all rested up. Let's hope the other one's the same. It's a big day for Chris and the team from the Cairns Turtle Rehabilitation Centre. You're going to go today, back out into the ocean. It's good. The finishing touches have been done to CB, including a coat of anti-fouling paint to stop algae and marine organisms attaching to his shell. Oh, wow. You guys haven't been here all night, have you? Yes. All night. All night preparing him. <laughs> you are looking prepped and ready for takeoff, let me tell you. It's a flash job when you're back. He's definitely ready to go. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> if there wasn't already enough excitement around the release, the fact that CB has this tracker means we're going to know exactly where he is. So he's from Mackay. Is he going to head back there? Who knows? Do you want to just check the tracker before we go, Chris? Yeah, it'd be great. It's going to wait for a satellite to go across before it beeps. Oh, that was one. Yeah. So it is working? It is working. Wow. So he's ready to go. <laughs> It's a great feeling because it means that you've done your job. It means that, you know, all the volunteers that have helped and everybody get these animals well, it's able to go back into the ocean. Jenny isn't the only one excited by today's release. The word's got round and everybody on the island will actually be down for the release today. Look, they've got a few friends here. <laughs> yeah, they have, haven't they? It is popular. There's months and sometimes even over a year of hard work that goes in to providing this moment. And sometimes you don't even know they're gonna make it through. But today, everyone gets their reward. The time's come now. Mickey is the first turtle to head back into the ocean. Ready? Up you go, all right? Good luck, mate. It's all yours, mate. The ocean's yours, mate. What a perfect swim. It was disgraceful. And that's exactly what you want. Away it goes. It's been a long road, buddy. The rest of your life out here. We'll keep in touch, right? With this. Now it's CB's turn. With his tracker, he'll be providing important information. You get out there, come on. There you go. <laughs> Look at you. Are those, are those little tears in your eyes? Hold on. Congratulations. Thanks for your help. Well, huh? Thanks for your help. They're out in the really big pool now. <laughs> it's great to see him out there. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Bondo Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, go and support us by checking out Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com. You'll find a whole range of great Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.